to me, it's one of the great untapped resources of Western hunting would be Nevada. Very few issues related to the public-private land interaction. If you're not hung up on having the best tag, you can get a tag pretty easy here. You see the animals, you go. You just go, because it is your land. Just over the, that land, we go a little bit further, and you'll be able to see their horns. Just over that edge, there's two bucks. I've drawn a leftover archery mule deer tag for eastern Nevada, and we're out here east of the Ruby Mountains in a small mountain range. Rifle hunting on your own is difficult. Doing it with a compound bow is even tougher. Hunting on your own on public lands with a traditional longbow is something reserved for only those seeking one of hunting's toughest challenges. The spot and stock with a longbow is my favorite way to hunt. Uh, it's super challenging. Just that excitement I get uh, by, by doing it in a traditional manner, getting in there close like the Native Americans used to hunt mule deer. Hunter Scott Jones is gonna pursue Nevada's mule deer with his traditional longbow and cedar arrows with natural feathers. While compound bows can provide reasonable shooting ranges of about 60 yards, traditional gear is typically limited to 30 yards maximum. Scott will have to be incredibly stealthy to close the gap between him and a mule deer. And with friend Randy Newberg along for the experience, it may help or hinder Scott's chances for success. I would probably go around this ridge and try to get in front of them. Except them. Yeah, it's a lot easier than sneaking on them when they're, when they're bedded. They're always looking for danger right now. They're grazing and, and kind of making their way over there. This hunt is probably going to be the hardest hunt I've been on in many years. It's a leftover tag in a unit that not many people want to come and hunt. It's early August, so it's hot. Scott decided he's going to do this with a bow. Not just a bow, but a long bow. Scott just had knee surgery. He's working on a bionic knee right now. This is the test drive for that knee. But the challenge itself is what makes up half the fun of the hunt. Get on this side of the ridge, because I think those bucks are down over that lip. Yeah, I think so. It's 400 miles from my home to here, so it's not some place that I've ever hunted before or even heard of people hunting before. It was just a spot that I looked at on the map and thought, you know, I'm going to give this place a try. I came all the way from Montana to come here and be part of this hunt. I caught up with Scott and said, hey, we got to get some scouting in. We got one day to really scout before season starts. So in the morning, if they were, if they were like that again, I'd what probably would you do? Would you just try to get in front of them if the wind was okay? If the wind was okay, but it, if it's anything like this, I would probably come in behind them and see if you could come around this ridge. And just let my scent slowly. Yeah, kind of do a soft push. If there's one thing that I emphasize to people when you come to a new place like this, it's scouting. If we weren't here scouting today, we wouldn't have any idea that there are two bucks right over this ridge here that we have the chance for Scott to, to make a plan on. I came out two days ago and, and set some cameras up on some water holes and uh, Randy joined me late last night. I get kind of excited coming up on the cameras. <laughs> Saw a couple of bucks up on the mountaintop and so we do feel confident that we can find some deer here. Okay, we got 13 pictures. Scott's been here for a few days. He's already been doing some scouting. He's telling me he's been seeing lots of elk, lots of cattle, and lots of horses. What about the deer, Scott? You got a deer tag. All elk, Randy. Yeah. So Wait. it's been on here for what, one day, two, two nights. days? Two nights. Where those deer were this morning was clear on up. I think this is about 8,000. They were at about 10,000. Today we said we got to use this prime morning hour to go look for deer. Now that we've done that, we're going to get camp set up because I just pulled in and crashed. I was tired, I'd driven all day. Part of our goal in this show is to demonstrate that anybody can come to a lot of these states and hunt. I hope that people look at this and say, wow, they went on a leftover tag. They went in the, in the area of that unit that's probably the least desirable because we couldn't get a filming permit in the wilderness area and we're doing it on our own, and we're doing it on public land. And if you aren't hung up on just, I'm only going if I have the best tag, come out here on a leftover tag. It's, you're still hunting, and it's a ton of fun. Home sweet home for the next five days, Randy.
Right now we're hunting late summer mule deer. They're in the velvet, they're out in more open basin areas because they just want to be in the open. They got great eyes, great hearing. You're not going to find them in thick, thick timber this time of year. This is a great time to be here because if you are able to glass and you have the patience to sit and glass, you're going to see a lot of deer. What we'll do, I'm going to follow behind you. You carry a cow to start with, and then uh, once we get there, if we got to drop a cow or whatever, two of us can hide behind one of these cows. However, we got to do it. I guess we'll assess it when I get up there, but this will be a first for me. <laughs> it won't be a first for me. Trust me, it works. When I called the biologist to get some information about this area and said, look, we can't get a filming permit in the wilderness area, so we're relegated to the other mountain ranges, he got this, oh man, too bad for you kind of tone in his voice. So I came here thinking if we find a deer, we're going to be lucky. Let's go up here a little ways and drop our packs, Randy. Well, we're finding deer, and not only are we finding them, but they're kind of consistent in their pattern which makes me feel pretty confident that we have a really good chance that Scott might get a chance to get an arrow in one of those deer. Because we gotta, we gotta get, get down and around. That's just extra weight. You just hang on right behind me. They're just right out there. They have no idea we're there right now. That doe has us back. She's looking right at us. tactical game you're you know trying to outsmart the animal even though their brain's not nearly as big as yours they are so keen their senses are so keen their their sense of smell is probably the the thing you have to look out for the most because once they smell you they know exactly what you are we got behind these cows and as long as you don't go straight at them and you kind of angle to where they're going and you don't let the wind get to them, obviously the human scent is, is going to blow them out no matter what. But we got so close, just not within longbow range. We, we were in, re in range for, you know, a, a compound. As quick as we got right here, Scott, the wind was blowing downhill when we were in that car yeah, right there. Quick as we got on this bench. Look at what it's doing. Yeah, off. I know it. Right there. That's when we were over there, the tactic was to come downwind of them. Yeah. One of the things that we do a lot of times when we're out spotting and stocking is even if we see a doe or, or a buck that we don't want to go after or a bull we don't want to go after, we just practice on them. <laughs> we got within 30 yards. If I would have put the cow down and gave Scott a shot, he had a perfect shot. Even with the longbow, he was in range for that. And, then we started laughing and making too much noise and she ran off. But you learn something, even if it's an adult. And besides that, it's a ton of fun. You aren't gonna make fun of my cow, are you? I am. I'm, okay. gonna, I'm gonna buy one. <laughs> Everybody who sees these cows, at first they make fun of it, and then they see something like that, and they're like, that's why I get one of those. Amazing. All the time I visited here, I don't know that I ever saw this green in August. Yeah, these are those big game uh, guzzlers I was talking about. When we say Nevada, everybody's going to say dry. It is dry here. And one of the things that you deal with in a dry place like this is there's a lot of habitat, but if there's not enough water, the habitat doesn't do them any good. These catch aprons collect water, runs into a pipe that's down at the lower end there and uh -huh. down into these tanks right for storage. Here. These are installed by the Elko chapter of Nevada Bighorns Unlimited. They are set up so that they only are used by wild animals um, like deer, antelope, and elk. So what's the deal, Scott? They just jump this fence and they come uh -huh. and water Yeah, the cattle water and the horses right there. pretty much can't get through it and the, the wild game can. They Young ones crawl over it, under it, I mean, and big ones jump over it. Even in this really dry period, there's a lot of water, or at least some water, for these animals to make utilization of all this other habitat.
We've come up as high as we can. Some of the places we've been hunting are over 10,000 feet. The benefit of that is in the summer, it's greener there, there's more moisture. But even with the moisture at the higher level, it's still highly concentrated in certain locations where the water is. See that dead tree? They'd be up that way. So you have to use that as one of your hunting tactics. We've done that by saying, all right, there's water down below this drainage. We know the deer are using this drainage. And in the evenings, we've been able to pattern them coming back up the drainage, feeding in these big sage basins. I don't think I could circle around them enough to push them up. Okay. And do we want to really booger with them? I'd rather keep them here. Yeah. Those are two different deer. Yeah, they are. One's a nice four point, like yeah. what, 21, 22 inches. Yeah. The other one's a wider, three, wider three point. Yeah. About that though, we saw three bucks yeah. this evening. Yeah, that's hot. I'm excited, man. Yeah. Tell that biologist that there are some deer here. <laughs> Amazing how after a day on the mountain, even something as simple as tacos, something as simple as spaghetti, seems like it came from a fine restaurant, even when the cook is as bad as I am. The biggest surprise of this hunt, to me, has been how consistently we've been in deer. I was left with the impression that if we saw one or two deer on this hunt, boy, that'd be a great deal. Well, we've seen deer every day on this hunt. And we know that in the summertime, the bucks are in the high alpine. So if you spend most of your time at the higher elevation, the percentage of deer you're gonna see that are bucks is gonna be very high. So we've been very lucky in that sense. And it's really surprised me to see how many bucks we've been running into. Even though the wind was really screaming, it was one of the most beautiful sunrises I've seen in a long time. Holy cow. I feel like I can see forever. We're lucky enough here in the United States to have public land hunting. You don't have to be uh, a six digit salary to afford to hunt like in other countries. I'm sitting at 10,000 feet and I can see for miles. Probably 80, 90% of that's public land. And the place where the mule deer live, that is public land. This little basin here I think would be out of the wind. Is that a deer right there? God, right behind that tree. Yeah, that, there's that buck. We're watching the sun come up as we're walking up the road that comes up here. And we glass in the basin, and there are the same deer that we've been seeing consistently every day. Looks like they're heading the same direction. I don't know how we would get up there. No, oh, there's three of them. There's another one. Those are both bucks. The doe is the one way off to the off to the right, if ever's our chance to try to get on them again with the cow decoys, it might be right now. We got to drop down probably right here in side hill. Okay. Just because yesterday they just kept moving up yeah. in front of us. Here we can drop down further. Kind of cut them off? Yep. Okay. Just tell me what to do with these cows. We've been using a cow decoy made by Montana Decoys, and I was surprised at how well it worked we were able to get within 60 and 50 yards, but using traditional equipment, I really would like to be a little closer. I know Scott would never admit this, but his knee, I don't want to say problem, but gosh, he is just toughing it out. And I feel guilty when I watch him walk. But Scott Jones would never say boo about anything. Scott, drop your cow. This wind just tuck in behind me. We're going with one cow. It's been part of the challenge of the hunt to cover the ground like I used to, and I think I'll be even stronger next year. We know where, we're, where they're trying to go this morning, same place as yesterday. You don't want to go straight at them or they get spooked. And our wind's coming uphill right now. We ready? Yeah. When you add the level of challenge that we have added to this hunt, that just brings everything you can think of to hunting, right to a focus. And we are here and we're doing it and we're having a blast. The closer we get to the animals, the more of a thrill it is. That's why we really enjoy archery hunting. We enjoy rifle hunting also, but archery hunting, and particularly with traditional equipment, you have to get very close to the animal, and that just compounds the thrill.
We would have been children. Got so close, I was about ready to launch one of these woodsmen's, and uh, I just didn't feel good about it. I just, it would just, I, I shoot instinctive, and I pulled up, and I said, as I started to draw, I said, it's too far. And I just couldn't take a chance on wounding one of those nice bucks. You do not shoot unless you're completely comfortable. He knows that. He's one of the most experienced archers I know. But I think he felt that way because he has this obligation that, oh, Randy came here, we need to get a deer, da-da-da-da. No, that, that stock right there is why I came to Nevada. Seems to be that 50-yard boundary that they don't want to have us break. Yeah, because right here is that edge of the timber. I think they'll come back out of the timber there this afternoon. And if they do, I'll just try to bump them to you if you think that'll work. Yeah. Well, last night of the hunt, we got some deer spotted. We're gonna try having Randy push them towards me. And let's hope the arrow flies straight. We have been so close so many times but when you're doing it with a longbow, you have to expect you're gonna have your share of frustrations and we've had that. But we look at each other, we say, you know what, this is what we asked for. This is what we said we're going to do. And whether we get one or not, the fact that Scott and I met our, our agreement between each other that we're gonna come hunting again this year, right there makes it a success, whether Scott gets his deer or not. Range this tree down here and see if that's within my distance. Oh, that's a little too far. I gotta wait till they get closer to that tree. I get a lot of satisfaction out of using a longbow. It's about the hunt. It's it's not about the kill. For me, it's it's that excitement that I feel getting in close, doing it in a traditional manner. I'm right below him. I'm paralleling him, bumping him up the hill. They got through. That's the end of that game. They blew out of this basin between him and me. Randy was trying to push those deer up up this drainage to us. He tried to get them up the hill, and, and they decided to go side hill and blow out of the basin. I don't know what more we could have done to ratchet up the, the level of challenge here, but that's part of why we hunt. If it was really easy, I don't know that there would be as much passion and excitement and, and just enthusiasm for getting out there and doing it. It's Something in your instincts just takes over. I'm in the moment, um, doing what I was, what what I was born to do. My eyes are on the front of my head. I'm a predator. Think about how hard we've worked, how many times we've climbed up and down these ridges. And I said, oh, this is a good place to glass. And there they are. What's that, 25 yards below me? <laughs> Through their ups and downs of this hunt, Scott and Randy ultimately enjoyed their time together in their pursuit of the game. He dealt with the early August heat, late summer deer patterns, and the big challenge of getting within that short distance for his longbow. Scott and Randy definitely consider this an on-your-own hunt for the memory books. The reality of any on-your-own hunt is you're never guaranteed success. It's the act of hunting itself which draws millions of sportsmen and women back to the field year <laughs> after year. And the very best part of any on-your-own adventure is that it's completely accessible and completely achievable by you, the real American hunter.